Hello, Savvy Entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here, and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 193, which means you can find all of the show notes as well as any relevant links over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 193. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the one thing that will amplify your business. So let's not dilly dally, let's jump straight into it. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Overwhelmingly, no matter what question anyone asks me about their business, there's one desire that underpins all of the questions. Whether people want to know how to get more reach in their business, how to get their Facebook ads working, how to get their launch working, whether they should be working on project A or project B, the number one underlying desire is for people to just speed things up. We want to amplify our business. We want to get it rocking and rolling as quickly and as easily and efficiently as possible. And we want to get to our destination or get to our goals as quickly as we can. We want to amplify not only our results in our business, but also the reach that we have and the conversion. So whenever I think about amplify, I think about wanting to reach more people convert more of those people into paying clients and therefore achieve bigger results and more in your business, whether that be making more money, uh, being able to fund more projects or whatever it is that you are looking to do and what the underpinning reason is why you are in business. So my number one strategy when it comes to amplifying your results is actually to simplify. Simplify in order to amplify. And what that looks and feels like is, number one, having less products. Now, I share this very openly that at the start of 2017, I had over 30 different products, 30 different paid ways that people were able to work with me, get support from me, learn business from me. And that was just overwhelming. Not only that, by keeping my time divided between not only selling all of these things, but also delivering them, I was actually slowing down my business growth. And I could see it really clearly at the Heart Center Business Conference in 2017, which was at the end of 2017. It was September 2017. So at that conference and in the weeks after, I had this overwhelming reality check that I was spreading myself thin and consistently looking for new ways that I could work with people and serve them and new things that I could sell to my potential customers and clients. So in order for me to be able to amplify my results and get my business growing faster and get in front of more people and amplify my reach and amplify my conversions, I needed to simplify my product mix. And I have done that over a period of time. I've shut down several courses, I've stopped selling books, I've um, stopped selling short-term things such as I had like short-term masterminds and short-term planning things and um, single paid workshops and all sorts of different things. And so I decided to pare it down to my key service offerings and I allow myself to play with short-term temporary new things from time to time when those things are working. And even now I can see that in the times where I'm experimenting with new things, I'm slowing down the growth of the existing things. And ultimately, if I had thousands and thousands of women joining the Takeoff and the Heart Center Business Academy every single year, I would not even be tempted to create new things. Yes, the entrepreneurial brain is always working and I always see that there are new ways that I can be supporting people. But ultimately, my biggest goal is to get my business serving as many women as possible and really nailing that multi-million dollar a year income goal. And in order to do that, my best pathway is actually to stay focused on a few things rather than spreading myself out amongst many. So maybe in listening to this, you also feel like maybe it's time for you to simplify your product mix. And I've got to tell you, it is tough closing some things down. I had people getting angry at me. 
there were uh, overwhelmingly people were fine with it and they totally understood. But there were a few people who were really upset that I was closing some things down. I had people who thought I was completely crazy for not continuing to run things, particularly when I closed uh, 100 Days of Colour, which was my income tracking and money mindset program. So many people said to me, like, just keep it open and just the people who are already in here will rebuy it. So you don't have to do any marketing for it. You just need to deliver. And it's only eight calls in in a six-month period of time. It's totally easy for you to do it, Tash. And I said to them, and I can say it now, hand on heart, I know it from what's actually happened. I have a feeling that even that time holding space and connecting and, and delivering for people in that space, if I invest that time more wisely into my core service offerings, my business will be more successful. And that has totally come true. I had people telling me they would pay three times and four times as much for that program if it meant that I would keep it open. And whilst I really love their enthusiasm, I knew I needed to take a break at least for a year to see what life was like without offering this additional program. And I still haven't made a decision about whether it will come back or not, but I know that in the time that I haven't been running it, I've been able to really focus down way more strategically and I've dedicated more time to delivering and setting up the automated sales processes for and launching my core offerings and that has been much better for my business. So less products might be one area where you need to simplify. Another area of simplification is less people. And as a connector and someone who really loves having a team and all the social elements that come with that, this one is a big one for me. I, upon reflection on my business, I saw that I was surrounding myself with people by hiring them into my team. And for me, as a connector type personality, I felt like the more the merrier on my team. But in fact, what I was doing was overcomplicating my business. And it wasn't just a matter of having less people in my team. It was also having less people report to me. So really making sure that I am making the best use of my time and not falling into the trap of spending more time managing others than I am actually showing up and being a talent in my own business. So for some people, simplifying your business in order to amplify it may mean that you need less people or less people reporting to you, but you shift the way that those services are delivered. I know for myself, there were several tasks that were being done by people in my team that could have been done much easier, much more efficiently by automations and by systems. Things like VIP onboarding, sending welcome emails, even things like invoicing that wasn't necessary, I was still getting people to do because I wanted to surround myself with as big a team as possible. And I wanted to surround myself with as big a team as possible because I was feeling lonely and I had other relationship needs that weren't being met socially. And so I just filled them with team members in my business. But in fact, what that was doing was starting to slow things down and making that there were lots of different handover points for different things in my business, which was complicating things and was slowing them down. So in order to amplify, I needed to simplify the structure of my team as well as reducing the number of different people who were involved in my business. Number three way that you may need to simplify in your business is to make things have less steps. Now, that might be less steps for your customers to come and purchase from you. It might be less steps for you in, in delivering something or getting something done. But how often do you stop and look at all of the processes and things that are happening in your business and really truly question, do we need to include this step? I'm going to give you a really juicy example. One thing that was a step whenever I was setting up a webinar in my business was to create an event for that webinar. Now, when I created an event for that webinar, it would go up on my Facebook page and we would share it into the heart-centered community. Then there would be extra posts to schedule into the event to remind people to sign up for the webinar. And then there would be extra posts to schedule to share the event over and over again. And then my ads person would put some money into making sure that event was seen by all the people who'd engaged with my page in the last 90 days. And the, it, the overall effect of all of that work was an extra 15 to 20 people registered for each webinar. 
So when I looked at that part of the process and do we really need it and is all the time that we're putting into it actually a, creating a return on investment for us, what if I put that time and money into just ramping up the Facebook ads instead, what would be the return on investment there? It was a no-brainer to take that out of our process. So now when I create webinars, I don't create an event for it on my Facebook page. Sure, there might be 15 to 20 people who miss out on that, but can I hit those 15 to 20 people other, other ways and make sure that they see that there's a webinar coming up? Absolutely. So for me, it did not make sense anymore for me to be creating events and having that as a step in our process. So have a look at all of the steps that are involved in your processes. Review one at a time, once a week. Just do one thing a week. Review one process, whether that's onboarding clients, onboarding VIPs versus onboarding people into courses, your email sequences, the way that you set up your newsletters, how you do your content each week. Whatever it might be, I want you to review it through the lens of are all of these steps actually necessary? And what is the return on investment from each of those steps? Can we lose a few of them? Now, we're doing this in my business at the moment. And I tell you, there's lots of steps that we are cutting out. And there is a lot of anxiety for me in like, oh, but what if I miss out on this? Um, the FOMO is real in me for this stuff. But ultimately, I have data in front of me as well as my gut feel on what's really powerful and what's actually working. And I'd much rather simplify these things as much as possible. One of the big things about the event part of creating an event for a webinar was that I needed to create an additional five pieces of copy just for us to have that event. There was the copy in the event itself, so all of the information in the description. There was also copy that was going to be sharing the event into different spaces, as well as posts that go inside the event. And every time we create an event, I would create five new pieces of copy so that we could start testing. Okay, well, we used these words last time and these three did the best. So we'll reuse those and we'll try these two new ones. And then we did this and now we're going to retry these. And so it was just so much extra work and brain space and workload for me. And when we looked at what number of leads were coming from all of that process, it was a no brainer to stop doing it. Now, yes, I know people will be like, oh, but you can invite people to events when you put them in these certain places. And, you know, oh, rah, rah, there's all these amazing things you do. Ultimately, it just wasn't worth the time and energy for me. And I'm really glad that we made the decision not to do it anymore. All right. One last thing that you might want to do less of in your business, and this might be quite controversial as well, is less freebies. And I understand that it's so amazing for us to be able to create free resources and be of value to our audiences, regardless of whether they purchase us from, from us or not. And I know the overarching theme out there of you know why we do freebies is to create this trust cycle with people and to be able to get people a taste of working with us and all of those sorts of things. But I got sucked into the every single podcast needs its own unique content upgrade kind of thing. I think that was in 2016, 2017 that I started doing that. And by the time the end of 2018 came around, there were so many freebies on my website with so many broken links and so many questions coming through. The customer service implications of every single freebie is phenomenal. And so when we did the big website makeover in 2019, one of my big decisions was we're going to eliminate all of those freebies and we're going to start again. And again, there are a few people who are a bit upset about it and they're a bit worried they're going to miss out on freebies and have they got them all before I delete them all and all of those sorts of things. But ultimately, it has been so good, not only for me, but also for people who follow me and my audience. And this is the part that I think is a really surprising but also not particularly surprising and also something to plant the seed for you because part one of my simplification process in 2017 was a realization that I was producing a podcast episode every week, a video blog every week which was a different topic, an interview every two weeks and three to four Facebook lives on my Facebook page every single week. And what I was doing for my audience was making them run around the internet following me to all these different places to make sure they got all the free value that I had to offer. And instead, what I do now is I record one video podcast episode. It gets shared the same episode as an audio on the podcast. So you can watch it in video or you can listen on audio. 
It is transcribed into written form for those people who want to just read through it quickly. And I do one Facebook Live a week that is related to the podcast episode for the week. So what I've done is I've taught my audience, actually, you can chill out. You'll get everything you need delivered to your inbox in my email, my newsletter, the heart to heart that goes out every week. And so you don't need to chase me anywhere. The important stuff that you need to know and the important freebies that are available for you will be delivered to your inbox and I'm keeping it nice and simple for you. And the overwhelming feeling of relief for me in not having to produce all of that content was huge, but only matched by the overwhelming relief that I got expressed back to me by my audience that they had so much less content they needed to consume from me each week. And it was such a big eye opener for me. So it's not just less freebies in terms of less opt-ins and lead magnets, but it's also less different free pieces of content. Thinking about how you can be more strategic and aligned and structured rather than just spewing free stuff out onto the internet all of the time. Now, one of the other big things that happened for me with freebies in particular was that I recognized I was starting to creep back into that belief that I needed to create a fresh webinar every time I ran a webinar. And the VIP clients I was working with and all of my amazing takeoff students had me saying to them, just run the same webinar again. If it works, nail it, now scale it. Run it again at scale, run it again at scale. And I wasn't taking my own advice. Even though I knew nail it and scale it, run the same one over and over again, I was switching out webinars in my launches. I was looking for new webinar topics to be running all of the time. And I needed to simplify it by just reusing and redoing the things that I knew that worked really effectively. So for the last few months, you may have noticed I've been rolling out the same webinars on repeat in different ways. Now, each time I do it, there's a different focus point or there's different ways that I express it. I don't have a script for my webinars. Um, I change up my slides slightly because I'm improving it each time that I do it and I'm scaling my audience larger and larger every time I do it. And so I have a set of webinars now that I just cycle through and improve and scale and improve and scale over and over again. So the need for me to come up with new webinars is totally gone and it creates so much space in my business. Not only that, by redoing some of my webinars, I have improved them way more than I would have been able to if I only did that one webinar once a year or once every two years, which it was starting to creep out to be before I made that change. And so I know that the webinars I'm delivering now are way better than the webinars I was delivering a year ago or two years ago, not just because I've become better at webinars in general, but because I've become better at delivering that message that's specific to that webinar because I've had so much practice at it. So think about ways that you might be able to have less freebies, less content, and actually do the distribution of the existing stuff more effectively so that you don't have to overwhelm yourself with all the different things that you need to create. You can simplify by having less freebies, both content ungated as well as gated lead magnets and opt-ins. Okay, so I hope that this has been a really helpful podcast episode for you. The one thing I would say out of all of this is you know that when you focus on one thing, you are way more likely to get that thing sorted and finished and nailed and scaled. We know this. We've seen examples. I'm sure you can see examples in your past of where this has been the case. So I want to invite you as a result of this podcast episode to do a very powerful review of your business. Where can you have less products, less people, less steps, or less freebies? And take an external perspective. Think about it from your client's perspective. Think about it from a business coach's perspective. Think about it from your team's perspective, as well as thinking about it from your own. Would it make it easier and more simple for your customers, for your team, for your business coach to be able to support you if you were to simplify? And then that's going to be creating that opportunity for your business to be amplified. 
Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Center Business Podcast. I'd love to hear your podcast ahas from this one. It's a pretty juicy one, right? So come on over to the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs Facebook group. Use the um, hashtag podcast aha. Let me know you've been listening to episode number 193 and pop any questions or comments you have about this episode there and we will continue the conversation. Until next time, gorgeous entrepreneur, I cannot wait to see you shine. Thank you so much for joining me here and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.